Is that okay? Can you hear me? Okay, I'll try not to have feedback. So good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to come out and speak with you. Uh, particularly enjoyed the opportunity to read the report more thoroughly. I first blush I went through the recommendations, so it's been nice uh, to be actually forced to go back and go through it. Particularly pleasant is the fact that Carolyn's home doing the laundry, which is usually my chore on Saturday, and I get to be here with you. Uh, just a couple of caveats at the front end. I apologize, I just didn't have a chance to do any overheads uh, in advance of the meeting. When I took a look at the review and was thinking about comments, just wanted to put it in a bit of a context. Um, I'm the director of the division, so my view tends to be high level. Uh, the kind of detail that you're getting from the other speakers, you won't necessarily get from me. So it's really nice to have a mix in terms of the panel. The perspective I've tried to bring is from Ontario Works and from a municipal perspective. I can't speak comfortably in terms of the delivery of the Ontario Disability Support Program. It's not my area of expertise and not our responsibility. And when I listen to the conversation today and when I read the material, I'm reminded that God lies in detail and she is well hidden. Uh, and I see this as a starting point in the conversation and as we kind of push out the concepts and push back in terms of what makes us comfortable or uncomfortable, we will hopefully get to a point that works for all of us. From a social service delivery perspective, the system needs to change and it needs to change fundamentally. So good for people who try to push the conversation forward and move us to a point that will work for the most vulnerable residents of the province of Ontario. I believe from a social service delivery perspective, we're ready for change. We may be a little tired, we don't like to use the word change because we do it fairly often, but we are ready to move forward. And I wanted to just comment on a couple of areas. The system management, uh, I want to pick up on the enabling employment, uh, the benefit structure, persons with low income, and then implementation. I understand the concerns in terms of merging the two programs. I do think, though, it's a worthy conversation to pursue quite independently at this point, and we need to think about how we pull that together and we're going to move the system forward, what would that look like, and we, quite frankly, locally do not have a system plan for the delivery of employment services, and I think we need to start stepping up to the plate to make that real and make it happen. I share the concerns around the pathway to employment. We've moved a long way in terms of uh, any job is a good job, talking about assisting people to maximize the full potential of participating in the community to sustainable employment. And we understand, certainly at the regional level, that that can be a long journey for many people. And you start where the person is at, and you work gradually to whatever the ultimate end goal is, that you hopefully as collaboratively develop with the person. If you set out that employment is the end goal, I get concerned that it doesn't recognize that it's a journey, and in fact, employment may not be the end goal for some people. It may be something else which is perfectly valid. And we never get recognition for the journey. The targets are always, how many people did you place in employment? And we all know that it takes a long time and a lot of effort to move the people. If they're coming as a victim of family violence, if they're coming with a history of mental health concerns. The benefit structure, we've had some very articulate concerns raised about the benefit structure, certainly from a regional perspective and a frontline staff perspective. Anything that moves the rates forward, we want to engage in that conversation. It's very hard for us to um, take people through a very intrusive process to what would be $5.99 a month and then problem solve with them around how do I pay my rent and my shelter allowance is only this much and I have to go into the basic needs. And there's a number of strategies that are worth pursuing, I believe, even if the end point is to try something else around enhancing people's welfare. We are concerned as municipalities, and certainly the recent conversation around discretionary benefits locally, and the inconsistency in the delivery of special benefits, one municipality to the next. We know as municipalities that each council has different thresholds and different willingness to contribute. Uh, to the cost, and that's led to the inconsistency. So I'm pleased to see that people have raised the conversation. There are a couple of caveats that I would just want, or the rate structure that I would want to raise. One is, if we're going to have less documentation, and we're going to go to online reporting, and I don't personally have a problem with that, we need to be very clear what our threshold is for reporting. 
because they do not want, and some of you probably have received a letter from David Jerks telling you that your benefits are suspended or that you're receiving an overpayment. And I do not want to be in those conversations uh, unless there's a very good reason. This, the system needs to be really clear for us and for you. And people pick up and commented on the fact that I get really concerned in today's environment when they say you can have a lump sum of money or block funding or a special benefit, whether it's employment, health related, or other related benefits, and you get the flexibility to deal with it. Why well, make sure that the money comes to us is not a diminishment of what we already have, but it's also sensitive to changes in our community. If our caseload goes up, and it's 34% higher than it was in September 2008, that block of money moves with that caseload. It doesn't stay locked. Very pleased with the fact, yeah, uh, two more things, and I apologize. I'm really uh, interested and would support the movement of benefits to persons with low income. It, I look for strategies that keep people off social assistance, either preventing them from coming on or maintaining them. As we look at implementation, my comment would be we need to get to the conversation around what is the vision and where are we headed. I'm concerned that as people start to look at this report, they pull out what we sometimes refer to as the low-hanging fruit or the things that will give us savings and reductions in the system. And it takes us into places that do not line up with the vision that we want in the long term. And clearly today's panel would say we have different takes on the report and there is a lot more discussion, healthy discussion, spirit of discussion that needs to occur. And so I hope we take the time to develop a vision that we can all share and then start to move forward and have more designs.